I've gotten a lot of feedback this year that NHL 18, and specifically competitive seasons in the higher divisions of HUT, have been a little bit more difficult than normal. I want to show you the settings and tricks that you want to be using when going up against the game's elite. I'm No Sleeve Suave. <laughs> So I want to start this video off by explaining how this is different from my prior settings and strategies video. In that video I explain why you want to be using high aggressiveness and things like that to cause turnovers and overall panic in, uh, in the offensive zone. When you face someone who is extremely good at the game, like I'm going to show you here in this video, um, you need to make sure that you're limiting your mistakes. Now the high aggressiveness is absolutely key when you're going up against your average opponent because you're going to smash them because they have no idea what to do when they're being you know pressured consistently you need to change your game quite considerably when going up in in competitive seasons as well as you know div one in hut because those players will absolutely roast you if you make mistakes so i'm going to show you in this video how i limit my mistakes when going up against a so to give you guys a little bit of background on what inspired this video uh, basically, I entered into a money tournament for some of the top players on PlayStation for uh, for Versus, and in the first round of the tournament, I pl I pulled Landek, who's one of the top players on P on PS4. Um, I've played against Landek all the way since NHL 15, and actually before I even started my channel or anything like that, um, I actually got roasted by him in a random online Versus game and asked him for some tips way back in NHL 15, so it was kind of funny that we ended up meeting up in the first round, um, but I knew that it was going to be extremely difficult because he's so good at the game. Um, so here's a couple things to keep in mind. If you know that someone is better than you, you need to hide your flaws essentially so you know what you're bad at in the game for me it's offense i'm not all that um elite when it comes to scoring goals um, i have a few go-to plays that are pretty creative um, but other than that i that's where i lack and now defensively i'm one of the better players and um i've you know that might have come from playing so much league as a defender that kind of thing but i knew that i was going to have to beat him by playing really really good lockdown defense so this tournament uh the first round was f uh, best of five and in this tournament i got down 0-2 to land deck in the first uh in the first two games i lost both of them in overtime so it wasn't a blowout or anything like that but i basically had to win three straight to keep it alive um, so I'm going to show you the settings and things that I did uh, in every single one of these games to keep me in it against one of the best uh, best on PlayStation. All right, so like I said, this is going to differ from my prior video. That is for your you know your uh, your regular division games and and getting more accustomed to the game. Uh, the high aggressiveness does work quite well, but like I said, when you get into the competitive seasons and playing the better players, you need to limit your mistakes. And unfortunately, high aggressiveness does come with some mistakes. So the four check you want to be using is still the one two two aggressive. You want to be using that because it is um you know you want to put pressure on it even if he's an elite player putting pressure on um you know doesn't really affect it no matter how good you are now with the neutral zone you want to switch to the one four and here's why you need to make sure that it is hard as possible for your opponent to get into the offensive zone uh for them because you need to limit their chances or at least take away those rushes if you're an aggressive and you're playing you know and it gets down to um, a guy and you only have one defender back defending the line it's a lot easier for the really really skilled guys to just blow past and then they're in the offensive zone you want to limit those chances by switching to the one four now the trap and four check usually i have it switched all the way to the four check side but again you need to be a little bit more cautious because if you get caught up ice it's going to end up in the back of your net against the really really good players now the offensive of pressure that stays the same still conservative this um this is in regards to uh how aggressive they are on the breakout and things like that it doesn't really matter but you don't want to have your defense all the way up your winger's ass and things like that so the defensive pressure puck side attack now you don't want to use tight point because again if you give if you get a little bit of time and space for an elite player, he's going to absolutely roast you. So you need to make sure that you're not completely selling out to be up on up on a guy. Um, now, the large box or the penalty kill, that's uh, pretty basic. Uh, that doesn't really change. The power play, you want to use the overload. And that doesn't change as well. And the defensive strategy, you want to make sure you're using staggered. Um, I'll show you guys why in a little bit. Everything else there stays the same, but the main ones are the 1-4 in the neutral zone and the trap 4 check not being all the way full, and then puck side attack and staggered as opposed to uh, tight point and high pressure. 
as well, like in my other video, you want to make sure for your lineup that all of your wings are opposite handed as well as your defenders. You need to make sure that you can set up the one timer as easy as possible, especially if you know you're going to have limited offensive zone time because you're playing a really good player. That's imperative, guys. You need to still use the overload, and you need to make sure that you have opposite-handed wingers, so a left-handed on the right wing and a right-handed on the left wing. That needs to be uh, set in place because, again, you're just wasting your time in the offensive zone if you don't have the one-timer set up. That's the most effective goal, and I'm going to show you how I beat Landek by you know, countering that. And as well as your defense, make sure that they are opposite-handed as well. That one timer from the point is still quite effective, uh, so you want to make sure that you have that in place. So guys, once you have your lineup set and your settings all good to go, you want to start using these for your competitive season games and your high division games in HUT. Maybe you've hit a rank wall, those kinds of things in, in Versus. These are going to help you. So here are the tips of what I use when going up against a really, really skilled player. One. Make sure that you've completely ignored time on attack. If you start looking at time on attack and you know that your opponent is absolutely killing you in the offensive zone, it doesn't matter because here's the thing. He can run around all he wants, but if he isn't scoring, I don't care. So completely get time on attack out of your head. A lot of players will think that that's ice tilt. It's not really because you know, I'm going to show you clips here of why I just let him do what he wants to do and take away that one thing that he is trying to do. And then once the puck is on my stick, I get out of the zone and try and make something happen in the uh, in the offensive zone. But again, guys, you need to make sure that you don't care about the stats in a game. The score is all that is required, okay? All right, now let's talk about how to actually stop them from running up the score by 10. So now that you've set up the 1-4 and your forecheck isn't nearly as aggressive, you know that you're not going to give up that many breakaways. It's just how the AI works. They're going to have more guys back, and it's going to limit their breakaways. So now that that isn't really an option for them, you know that they're going to have to score with a cycle and things like that. So I'm going to show you clips here from uh, from this game in particular. They almost all were identical. They were all one-goal games except for the last one. I think I won by two, but... They're all almost the exact same. He roasts me on time on attack, and I have roughly the same amount of shots as him. And that's it. But what you want to do, once you know that he's just going to have to cycle on you, that's when you can actually employ, em, employ some strategies that um, you know can take away that one-timer that, that you know that they are looking. Here's a perfect clip of basically how the entire game went in my defensive zone. So once he got into the zone, I knew that there was one of two things he's going to look for. If he gets a little bit of time and space, he's going to try the top side wrister, top side wrister or he's going to try for a one-timer from either the point or the wing. So knowing that, basically what you want to do is I'll control my defenseman here, and then I switch to my right winger when I know I'm not going to get to him. And instead of putting extra pressure on, so then you, you basically have left a guy wide open. If it's a two-on-one, if you have you know your AIs attacking him, and then you go in to put pressure on as well, that you know somewhere there is a guy open. And with the elite players, that's where you're going to get burned because they can find that. That's what they're looking for. Very rarely are they actually looking at the guy with the puck. So in this play, not once but twice, I know once my D-man, or my, sorry, my AI is actually going to attack him, that I need to go and look for where he's going to get the puck to um, once my AI is actually put pressure on him. So what I do, I know he's going to pass to the point because that's what opened. So I pull my winger up, and not once but twice do I block his shots because I know that's exactly where he's going to go with the puck. The next thing you want to keep in mind, especially in the defensive zone, is you need to know when you can go in to block and things like that and when to pull off. So if you're you know, putting pressure on somebody with the puck, you need to know that, okay, you're now you're just chasing, and that's going to lead to goals, so you need to pull back. So a lot of players will think that the, the first thing that will come into their mind is the skill zone. The skill zone is a really cheap and easy way to play. Basically, you just take a centerman and you stick them down in the slot to clog the slot because then they can't do cross-crease one-timers and things like that because there's just too many guys in the, in the slot there. That's not what I'm advocating. You can control your D-man. You can control your wingers. You can control your center. It doesn't matter. What you need to be doing is making sure that you're taking away the two main goals the short side wrister, as well as the one-timer from anywhere. So you need to be reading and reacting to it. So if someone's cycling down low, and now they're going down behind your net, 
if you were behind him, even by a step, switch players. Because if you were going to chase down behind the net, that's probably going to be a goal. That guy is now out of the play. He's useless. You need to switch off and make sure that you're now, you know, in a more advantageous to block some more passes or take away what he's trying to do behind the net. You need to make sure you never chase, guys. And basically, it doesn't matter what player you have selected. Your AI will re react. You want to make sure, above all else, that you're watching for the open passing lanes. When you're playing elite players, they are amazing at it. But if you can get good at actually you know, reading where the open plays are and not watching the guy with the puck so much, you're going to have a lot more Ws. When it comes to offense, here's my honest opinion. If you know that you are not as good as a player, and it's easy to tell. Like I said, guys, time on attack might not be something you should pay attention to. But if you're getting dominated, then you know as a player that you know things aren't going very well and they're reading off you much better than you're reading off them but that's fine when it comes to offense you need to take advantage of the little chances you get if you get a two on one and things like that those are pretty easy you need to bury those but when it comes to actually getting into the offensive zone trying to set up the overload and thing is still important if you see it and the guy in the slot is open in using the overload then you want to rip that but if not you want to just take shots from anywhere guys it's EA. It's a game. Unfortunately, you know, I don't make the game. This is just how it is. But unfortunately, when you're playing against lesser skilled players and there's ice tilt and things like that, shots go in from anywhere. And that's what you want to make sure you're doing. Um, in those games against Landex, I made sure that my shots were still high. And this is not how I normally play at all. He's just extremely good at the game. And I knew that if I was going to have any chance, I need to at least take some shots on net. Because if I'm trying to set up that perfect play, he's very good in the defensive zone as well. And it's just not going to happen you need to make sure that you're just shooting from anywhere um because you really never know so guys i hope that gets you some more competitive seasons and you know high ranked versus wins um if you guys like the video hit me with a like i do appreciate it i'm almost at 4,000 subscribers i really appreciate the following guys and i'm going to keep making a video at least once a week um come january i will ramp it up a little bit um but again guys thank you for everything i'm no sleeves 12 you stay average. Let's see you